Why is it for many of us, worry seems to be this constant companion? I have a theory about worry. I think it's a habit. Okay. So I think that, and I think worry has companions too. So if you invite worry into your life or you, if you allow her to occupy space in your life, she'll bring some friends with her. She'll bring fear and she'll bring anxiety. And I meet so many people that will tell me they can relate to this. It's a, it's a sort of a, I call it a low grade fear. It's an apprehension that's just kind of traveling with them all of the time. And they can't even really put their finger on it. It, it becomes background noise, like elevator and, and music in the elevator or the operating system on the computer. And we just become so accustomed to it that we're not even aware that it's there. So one of the things they really try to teach people is pull worry out, uh, label the emotion, call it by name, and check in with yourself. What am I feeling? Why am I feeling like that? And what do I need? And how am I going to get that need met? Uh, is it something I can do or is it support that I need to ask for some, from someone else? Because really, uh, fear and worry and, and action can't live in the same space at the same time. They are mortal enemies. Action will kill, kill fear and fear will kill action. So it's just really which one are you going to feed? Which one of those are you, are you going to feed the action or are you going to feed the fear? I also think something else, you know, from a personal experience, I lost my dad this year, and that was really hard. It was a really hard, long journey for him. And my mom, for the first time in 60 years, is on her own, right? Now, of course, she has a network of friends and family, and she's deeply loved and cared for. But the fact remains that, this, that she has spent her whole life with this gentleman, and now he's gone, and she's having to make lots of decisions and she's having to uh, reinvent herself like what will the rest of my life look like and what do I want it to be and in all of that change what I've noticed is in in the presence of change uh, there's some big gaps where things uh, uh, loss has occurred and if we allow it I'm noticing worry will fill the gaps it will fill that space if we let it do that so change I think is one of those catalysts that actually can become the framework for worry. We're going through massive change. We don't have our legs under us yet. We don't exactly know how everything's going to turn out. And, and, and what we do is we practice, we rehearse the fear part rather than the action part. So I think that uh, through the natural event of life, we, act, we actually teach ourselves to worry. I have a, I have a, a, a tip for your, your listeners or your viewers. Make an appointment with worry. Make an appointment. Like it's going to be a 15-minute session, and maybe it's at 3 o'clock today. And you say to yourself, at 3 o'clock to 3.15 today, I'm going to worry myself sick. I'll even take notes, right? I might even miss a meal or a snack, right? I'm going to really worry. I'm going to write everything down. And if, if I'm tempted to worry before that period of time, I'll remind worry, no, 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 our appointment is at 3, right? You don't get to invade the other times of my day. And at 3 o'clock, I'll worry. And at the end of my worry appointment, I'm going to invite gratitude to that party. And I'm just going to spend five minutes, ten minutes, thinking of all of the things that I have to be grateful for. And what, I'm, what, I, what I've learned after practicing this personally is worry stops showing up for her appointments because she is not interested in hanging out with gratitude, right? And again, uh, you know, she, her, her, her friend's fear and anxiety and depression and all of those things that want to accompany her are not interested in gratitude either. So there are some strategies around we turn it into action. And, and really, I love what Brian Tracy says about this. He is one of my favorite authors and speakers. He's been a mentor to me my whole life and doesn't even know that he's been a mentor to me. But he would say that worry is like negative goal setting, right? It's like throwing your car into reverse and hitting the gas and trying not to run into stuff. The reason that we, that we, that we sometimes have become so good at it is because that's what we're practicing. So if we could flip that over, how do we want things to turn out? How do, what do we want it to look like? Practice and vision thinking as well.